Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on vector calculus for electromagnetism. This is video 45, or video 4 in the subset on the Helmholtz theorem. Specifically, I'm going to show you part 2 of the proof of the Helmholtz theorem, and this is the final part. There are a number of videos previous to this which are relevant. In 40 and 41, I discussed the Dirac delta function. In 42, I discussed taking the gradient of 1 over the magnitude of the separation vector. 43 I took its Laplacian and in 44 I began the proof of the Helmholtz theorem. Now in this particular video we'll be using a lot of the results from from video 44 and the the technique so I'll just, I'll, just, I'll just use them straight out in this particular video. Now the proof of the Helmholtz theorem is quite involved because it, it requires a lot of the results from our study of vector calculus and have written most of the important results on the bottom left of your screen. We use this particular product rule in video 44 and we'll be using this one in video 45. So what happened was as follows in video 44. We had an arbitrary function, let's say f a function of r. And we could always write this function as follows. using the Dirac delta function. I'm sure you can understand that. Thereafter we invoked the Laplacian of 1 over the magnitude of the separation vector which is here. And after that then what we did was we applied a product rule and so on and we broke up the function into two separate parts. We had a part 1 and a part 2. Two integrals. So I kept the second integral until today, which is here in video number 45, but I worked on the equation 1. And we broke that down into two components. And one was a surface, a closed surface integral, and one is a volume integral. Now in this video we're going to get something similar. We're going to get a closed surface integral and a volume integral. And we'll be able to get rid of uh, we'll be able to get rid of the surface integrals which for reasons I'll explain in a moment and the surface integral left from the video 45 will be our scalar potential so for electric fields it will be called the voltage and the expression number 2 will give us for magnetism the magnetic vector potential capital A so Expression 2 was as follows. It was minus 1 over 4 pi and then we had the double curl. So we had the volume integral of f a function of r prime multiplied by 1 over the separation magnitude of the separation vector integrated d tau prime. So just like in video 44 I'm going to ignore the second operate like this for the moment and bring it back in later on. So I'm just going to manipulate this expression here, the first curl. So the first thing we can do is write it as follows. So we have minus 1 over 4 pi. Now note of course that the curl is with respect to the unprimed variables. So the only function it will affect is or, uh, excuse me the magnitude of the separation vector here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the curl in. Like that. Now the other thing we note is that we can swap the we can swap the nabla operator to operating on the the primed variables with the cost of a minus sign, which is what we do now. Then we invoke the product rule down on the bottom left of your screen. So if we look closely, what we actually have is a scalar multiplied by the uh, is is well a scalar multiplied by the curl. Okay, so we can rewrite it as follows. So we're going to get plus 1 over 4 pi then we're going to get our volume integral so the primed curl f of function of r prime 
d tau prime over the magnitude of the separation vector. We need to take away from that 1 over 4 pi the volume integral again and the primed curl of f a function of r prime divided by the magnitude of the separation vector. Integrated of course d tau prime. And finally to complete equation 2 we rewrite it as follows. 1 over 4 pi the integral over the volume so integral over the volume the primed curl like this and we have separation magnitude of separation vector but what we do is we we uh, convert the volume integral to a surface integral as follows so we have minus 1 over 4 pi the closed surface integral the closed surface integral of 1 over the magnitude of the separation vector f a function of r prime crossed with d a prime so it's important to know that we have a cross product here now so f a function of r prime d a prime d a prime like this all right so what this is is the solution or the manipulated equation number two that means we're almost there now so I'm going to note that we have equation two and I'm going to rewrite down equation number one so equation number one had minus one over four pi the closed surface integral f a function of r prime over the magnitude of the separation vector dotted with da prime and that was to add to or we had to add that to or we had to add to that excuse me 1 over 4 pi the volume integral 1 over the magnitude of the separation vector the primed divergence of f function of r prime d tau prime of course we have to add the two of these together but the last thing we'll notice is that just just before just in case that we forget is that equation 2 we have to take the curl of all of equation 2 and we need to take the gradient of all of equation 1 but we still won't do that yet so just keep that at the, ba the back of your head we take the the uh, the curl of equation 2 and we take the gradient of all of equation 1 so now what we need to do is simplify this and it takes a small bit of logic, actually takes a quite a good bit of logic I would say to do this. Basically what we say is if we can if we can reduce the surface or if the surface excuse me if it recedes to infinity and the function f of r is regular at infinity then what we can do is we can get rid of the surface integrals. But how do we get rid of the surface integrals? Well we do that by making one assumption that the function f a function of r prime goes to zero as the uh, as we'll say we integrate or the surface area goes to infinity so because we're integrating across all space provided that the function goes to zero really quickly this just becomes zero if we get rid of this and we get rid of this so like i said as the area of our sphere which we're integrating uh, across which we're integrating gets bigger the function goes to zero and we're left with two components so I'm just going to write the two components out we're left with minus bringing back in the gradient function we minus the gradient of a scalar and the scalar is minus 1 over 4 pi or oh, well the integral excuse me is minus 1 over 4 pi there's your gradient then we have the integral over the volume the primed divergence of f a function of r prime over the magnitude of the separation vector integrated d tau prime and we have the, we have uh, the curl of a vector, I'm going to call it a a function of r, 
and this is equal to 1 over 4 pi and we have the curl of the integral of the primed curl of f a function of r prime d tau prime divided by the magnitude of the separation vector and that's it so what we have here on the top is our scalar potential and on the bot bottom we have our vector potential now just before you you might be asking excuse me how come we know that this is a scalar well it's a scalar because you cannot take the gradient of anything that isn't a scalar so by taking the gradient we, we get a vector and that's that's what the gradient does so if we're taking the gradient it must be of this it must be the gradient of a scalar we're getting all right so that means we're allowed to break up uh, we're allowed to break up our functions in terms of scalar potentials and vector potentials and the way we use it in electromagnetism is we find that the curl of our function is zero so let's say just just looking at elect electrostatics very quickly let's say our function instead of f a function of r prime we're talking of the electric field a function of r prime and if i told you that in electrostatics the curl of the electric field was zero like this that would mean that instead of our function instead of our function e uh, being e a function of r being we'll say the scalar plus the vector potentials the vector potential will go to zero and you're left with just the scalar potential and which we call of course the voltage and then for magnetism what happens is the divergence of our magnetic field is zero which kills our scalar potential and this time we're left with the magnetic potential okay so that's all i've got to say about that thanks for watching please pass it on to your friends subscribe to my channel and you might also give me a comment in the box below